Hey guys, Sean Hammond with Premier Guitar here to talk to you about the subject of my latest tuning up column, which is flat wound strings. Now, I've been playing guitar a while, it's like 30 something years, but I had honestly never really even heard of them for the first 20 years of that or so, and it was never really on my radar. But a few years ago, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, whatever, I think I was reading on forums or something, and I got it in my head like, I gotta give these a try. Like there were players on there who were just like raving about them and how they tried them and never went back. So I was like, I gotta try them. Like how could I play this song and not know what the hell they're talking about? Now I know there are all sorts of theories. If you've uh, if you're sort of into the subject of flat wound strings, there's a lot of talk and chatter about who played flat wilds on which recordings. I don't know how much of that is really verifiable fact or whatever. I, I think um, it's supposedly a given that the Beatles' 12 strings, their, their Rickenbackers and stuff were flat wilds and stuff like that. Um, but I think as far as like Chet Atkins and stuff, like a lot of people think of, of country or swing as being the genres that use flat wound strings. Um, jazz, of course, but I guess Chet did not use them. But I guess my point is without blathering on about something I don't know a whole lot about is I think there's a lot of conjecture. And uh, so I wasn't looking for any specific sound for a genre or player or band. I, I don't play in a cover band or anything. I was just like, I should try it out. So, um, I've been using a certain brand of strings for quite a while, still use them, and I was just like, oh, I'll, I'll get a set of theirs. And I did. And uh, pretty much <laughs> I could not get them off my guitar fast enough once I put them on. I think it was on one of my Jazz Masters. And I just put them on and I was like, it sounded dead. And I was like, I don't get this. Maybe, maybe it's me. But for whatever reason, I was just like, it seems rational to conclude that flat wounds aren't for me. Like the string company that I've used all these years obviously is a good company. Like <laughs> everyone uses them. So flat wounds just aren't for me. Fast forward a couple of years or a few years, I guess. Um, I reviewed this guitar, oh, I guess it's like four years ago now. Uh, wasn't this exact one. Uh, my wife bought me this for Christmas last year, but I, I reviewed one just like it and loved it and uh, was just kind of stuck in my head lusting after this guitar. Um, it's a Gretsch Players Edition Broadcaster. I love the guitar, but I was like, I don't want it to just sound kind of like just another one of my other guitars. I want more Gretschiness, I guess is for lack of a better term, what I was looking for. One or more Gretschiness out of this guitar because it's so beautiful, it plays so great, it's so adaptable. I think the benchmark that was in my head was, oddly enough, the opening riff from Elvis Presley's Don't Be Cruel. Now I know Scotty Moore didn't play a Gretsch. Um, it was probably his signature Gibson or something. And it was probably a full hollow body, not just a semi like this. But that was that's what was in my head, that sort of woody resonance with real warmth, but sort of, I don't want to say vintage-y, but you get the picture, I think, hopefully. So all this time, the last few months, I've been trying to figure out how to fit the Gretsch into what I do, give it a really unique voice and place. Somewhere along the line, just the last couple months, it, kind of reoccurred to me those things I had read on on forums about flat wound strings and like maybe I need to try them again and then I remembered oh there are a lot of guys a lot of players on those forums who just they weren't just like flat wound guys they swore by a couple of brands like I believe specifically Pyramid brand and uh, Tomastic Infeld. They're pricey strings. <laughs> 30 bucks and up. I think pyramids are even more like 40s. But I was like, you know, I can't dismiss that whole flat wound thing like I, I have been for the past few years without trying those too. So I ponied up 
put a set of the the what are they the swing jazz tomastics in my car at bottom and I, i'll be honest even while they were on the way to me like after i clicked buy now i was immediately like having buyer's remorse and yeah it's only 30 bucks but at the same time i was like what if it's just like the other time when i put them on there and i'm not joking within seconds i was just like this sounds awful i didn't want that again i resist resisted the urge to cancel the order when they came a couple days later i even thought about sending him back so i put them on my gretch and it was like the opposite experience of the other time i was immediately like these sound really cool they have that flat wound sound which of course is a little mellow but they also have a lot of detail and you can get them to bite <laughs> So as you can hear, flat wounds are great for old school rockabilly or whatever, classic rock, whatever you want to call it. It sounds amazing, I think. But like when I kicked on that fuzz, oh, am I right? <laughs> By the way, what I was using there on the fuzz bit was the new Valco KGB fuzz. And before that with the more mellow tones, um, that was the guitar directly into an Ibanez Echo Shifter, uh, then into a J-Rocket Audio um, Archer. <laughs> almost forgot the name. J-Rocket Audio Archer, uh, then into uh, Sound City SE 30 amp. Sounds pretty cool, eh? Anyway, so give those flat wounds a try, no matter what you're into. I mean, you never know. Thanks for joining us, and don't forget to hit subscribe uh, to check out other new videos. Of, you know, Rig rundowns, riff rundowns, lessons, all that cool stuff. Catch you later.